All right, we will we'll get started. Um, so, anyways, this week I think it's going to be a little bit lighter as far as as far as content goes, which is probably good news for all of you guys. Um, because basically what we do in this week, um, this week is kind of the start of this uh point where we kind of start going back for more of like a deeper dive on maybe something we've already seen. Um, that's not to say that we won't see like a, a couple new things here and there, but but basically the pace at which we are learning, it, it should get easier because we've um kind of learned like this foundational layer, so to speak. Um, so, anyways, this week is is really about revisiting joints. Um, we're going to talk more in depth about using a couple of different ones. And to be honest, like we've already covered a lot of this before. Um, you know, I, I like to cover this kind of along the way. And when we talk about joints the first time, um, just so that way it's nothing too crazy new. Um, so anyways, uh, this is something we've pretty much all done before. Um, I, like I said, I really don't think any of this will be super new. Like even, even the exercises are going to be uh, fairly simple. Um, so anyways, we will jump right into it. Um, um, basically the first thing I want to talk about is, um, that I, I see come up a lot, especially in the reading is this concept of an outer joint. Um, and just so you know, an outer joint is the same thing as a right or left, um, so, so let's just go ahead and hit uh, question one here. So it basically says, uh, write, um, basically write a query, um, write a query that returns each customer name along with their total payments. Um, so let's just do that. So we're going to start with customer, um, C dot, uh, first name, C dot last name. From customer C. All right, simple enough. There's our customer names. Um, and then what we want to do is add in their um, total amount. And I'm going to also add in customer ID here just so it matches a little bit closer here. It's customer ID. There we go. I don't know why it doesn't like that, but. It works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in um, the payment table and we can see here that the payment table also has customer ID. So we're going to join that now. Um, I'm going to do, uh, it says include all customers, even if no payment ex record exists for that customer. So that means we need to do a left join. And if it helps, you know, be sure to keep this SQL joins uh, diagram handy, you know, so we can, uh, if you need to, and quickly kind of pull it up because <clears throat> because it is super handy uh, right so here's here's our little cheat sheet so in this case we want everything from customer even if they don't have a payment so we're going to do a left join and we're going to join that to payment p on c dot customer id is equal to p dot customer id So now we're duplicating things. So we want to get the the total payments. So that to me equals a sum. So we're going to say sum of p dot amount as total payments. And now that we have aggregation, we need to say group by sum, or we can just say total payments, but I'm going to group by the sum of p dot amount. We'll say total amount here. Oh, and we have an error. Let's see what it says. Can't group on total amount. Oh, yeah, because we don't group on that. We group by the other things. So let's go up here. There we go. So now we have our total amounts. And again, it says, uh, you know, these will differ. And it says include all customers. So so it shouldn't look like this. It, it'll look like this, but that's just to kind of give you the, the definition and an example of the, the tables. So anyways, that's number one. So nice and easy. Uh, we've done stuff like that before. Um, so now what I want to show you is... Uh, 
question two. So it says reformulate your query from question one to use the other outer join type. So um, what's confusing to a lot of people is they say outer join. Um, like, what does that mean? And, and basically a left join is an outer join. Whenever you hear the word outer, just think it's either a left or right. Because this is the same thing. Left outer and left are the same thing. The only difference is the one has an extra word. That's why we we tend to leave it out, but you can use them both um, interchangeably. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to do just what it says, which says take the same query, um, but this time use the opposite join, um, the inverse. So in this case, a right join, but we want the same results. So all we have to do, because the only difference between left and right is the order in which these come. So basically we can say, look, I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna swap out customer for payment, right? Just do that. And then we can just do a right join. Nothing else changes. We just swap the order, swap the join. We get the same results. We just use the other join. So nice and simple. Um, and again, not to be confused, if you hear the word outer, it's just, oh, you know, don't get confused by it. If you see right outer, think of a right join, left outer, left join. We just take the word off normally because it doesn't add any value essentially. All right. So um, there's a couple others here that are, um, so we'll cover question three. Question four um, isn't too crazy. It's kind of like what we kind of just did. You just kind of have to use a right join instead. Um, and then question five is the same thing. Um, it's just like a little bit different. So I'll leave these because again, a lot of this should be reviewed. So I kind of want it to be a little bit of a, not so much a challenge because it's not so much of a challenge, but I want you to, to think about it a little bit. Um, so, but the one thing that we haven't covered as much is, is question three. Um, and so what it says is it says devise a query that will generate the set of one through 100. Um, and it says use a cross join with at least two from clause queries. So basically we're going to kind of fabricate some data and, and we're going to kind of do that in kind of like a clever way. Um, Cause obviously like if we wanted like a list of one to a hundred um, you know, we could use Excel and import it. We could do a bunch of things, but the easiest way is to, to use these kind of clever little tricks, I guess, so to speak. Um, so let's think about it, right? Um, we know that the numbers of zero or one through 99, one through a hundred are really just, um, you know, two digits really. Um, so, so that's essentially what we're going to do. So I'm going to first build one query that just selects the numbers one through, um, nine. So select one, um, union select two union etc. And I'm going to slim this down just so it's a little bit uh, easier to read here. Select three union select four union select five union select six union select seven union Select eight, union, select nine, and then I'm gonna select 10. All right. So there is our, um, uh, let's just do zero. I'm trying to think, anyways, there's one. So we could run this and we get a list of you know, one through zero, one, really one through nine. Uh, we'll, we'll play around with that because I can't remember off the top of my head, like really what we're, what we need to do here. So, so anyways, there is one. Now I'm going to slim this down again, some just to make it easier to read, but 
that way we kind of get the picture. Um, just slim it down so it fits better on one screen so we can see the whole query here. But really, we're just kind of fabricating some data. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of build my shell here, and I'm going to say select everything from, and then this is my subquery one that it kind of mentions in the, and I'm going to call this a D1 for digit one. So we can run that, and now we're getting everything from digit one. Now, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this again, same thing. We're just going to copy this. And I'm going to say cross join. And we're going to put this here and I'm going to call this digit two. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to bring in every possible combination of number. So let's uh, say select everything from D1, D2. And now you'll see that we have, you know, basically every possible combination. So now what I'm going to do, and this is again where we can kind of play around just a little bit, um, but let's do, you know, let's actually do the sum first, or let's just add them together. So I'm going to say D1, and I guess we need an as here. Let's call it num. So let's make sure that. So that whenever works. you do this, I'm always trying to follow along. Like I have mine pulled up on the side. Uh huh. And I'm pretty sure I've done everything that you have. Let me see. Oh no, I didn't. I I accidentally had left my first and my colon in. Never mind. I'm following along. I got this. Right. Yeah. No worries. Um, and this one's gonna get a little bit longer. So, anyways, I'm gonna add as num so we have a column name to go off of. So they're both the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say D1 num plus D2 dot num as numero. Let's just say, new. you know, there we go. And then I'm going to say order by one. Up. And we can see we're getting some some duplicates here. So what I'm going to do, but let's see what our total is. Okay, so yeah, that only gets us to um, like 18. So the sum isn't going to work. So really what we're going to do is let's try concat. So I'm going to concat d1.num with d2.num as final number. We'll just do final number. There we go. And that gets us all the way to 99. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say plus one to make it math. And there we go. So basically can cat the two numbers together after we cross join them. And then that gives us a final number. Um, and we can kind of see how that works. If we go d1.num, d2.num, and then our final number, we can kind of see how this is working. And let's sort by three. There we go. So you can kind of see how this is working. Because we're doing the cross join, every number is matched with every possible com combination, just like, you know, the way our mathematical system works. Um, so, you know, our first one is zero, zero, and I add one um, just to make it work with the zero to or one to a hundred. So basically I add one. So you can see our, our final number. So basically, you know, zero, one becomes two, zero, two. Like if we were just going one through 99, which seems to make more sense to me, um, you know, if we were going really one through 99, um, or zero through 99, that would be a more, in my sense, mathematical appropriate problem. You know, this is essentially how it works. We take the cross one, you can see zero from D1 gets matched with zero through nine. So there's our one through nine. And then, you know, we switch and then we'll go into the tens. 
the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. We all made it through kindergarten. So hopefully we can all count to 100. And essentially that's it. And so like if we wanted to do the zero through 99, we could just add zero here to kind of take away those extra digits to kind of tell it, hey, you know, these are numbers that we're talking about here. Because once we do the math, it coerces it from essentially like a concatenation string to to number. Um, or if we want to solve for, you know, what the, the other says, we can just add one and that essentially will boost us up by one to get us basically one through through 100. So, anyway, so this was just... like my nemesis in the week. I just finally just gave up and stormed away from the laptop. So could you, anyway, I'm trying to follow you exactly. Could you just keep your screen right there? I'm just seeing, I have a mistake somewhere and I'm trying to see yep. where I made yeah. the mistake. Let's see. So I did, I, okay, I have to put my, after the select, D1. Sorry for everybody else. I am just such a numbskull at this. At least for this week has not been my week. Um, comma, and then you did concat d1.num, comma d2.num, and then you did a plus sign, plus one as final number. Got it, okay, let's see. Mm -mm. Still have something wrong. As, So can you talk me through again why you, that on that first line you say select one as num union? Why is that important? Um, really, this is just to give it a column name because if we didn't have the as, it we, we don't have like a name to call it, so to speak. And and we, we kind of need an, a column name for up here because this is just a subquery that's generating like a temp table. So... Um, I only we only need it up here on the first one because we're unioning all the others will subsequently get named the same thing because we only have one column in that table. Um, so basically, I give it just like a column name of num, which is just short for number. Um, so then that way, outside of here, we can reference that column um, when we're kind of like putting it all together. Okay, I got I got it except at my top. I have zero, one, two, like my my th my final number starts with two. I'm sure what I did wrong. Why would that have happened? Do you have it sorted by order by um mm -hmm. order by column? order by three? I put order by three. I want to take everybody's time just because everybody else probably has it. And I'm like the only one that's sitting here scratching my head. But like, I was so frustrated. Like even when I was following along, because I, I also, when I'm reading the textbook, I like to follow along my sequel and do what they're doing and say, and then you get this. Even when I did it, according to how the book wanted it, I couldn't get it right. I was just like, wow, what is my problem? I'm following this exactly out of the book. If you can share your screen, we can probably look at it really quick. Yeah, here, let me uh, let me stop my share. Or if you want to just shoot your query over in the chat, I can we can plug it in, take a look. OK. okay. I don't know if my workbench does it, but um, there's also row number, which would be a thousand times easier, which I know that's not the point of this query, but there's a function called row number that does exactly this. It's yes. Just, yeah. Okay, I put it in the chat. I'm ready for some group intervention. Yeah, let's take a look here. All right, so let's run it, Just see what we get here. Did it start for one? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep. That oh, looks oh, right oh. to me. Oh. Because when I 
Like seriously, I just cut and pasted it into the text and I, I do it. I'm gonna do it one more time. Oh, now it says one. Well, whatever I did when I tried to show it off, now it's gonna start at one. Okay. I'm gonna save yep. this as Yep, no, it looks good. Thank you. Oh, so frustrating. Perfect. All right. Um you look at yeah, the wording of question. You look at the wording of question one. I got the same answer you did, but the wording just threw me off forever. I think it's so confusing. So one of the things that threw me off, it just says three rows, which I know they said it might not be the same, but it's not like not even close to three rows, right? Of the data there. And then it says uh in that bottom one, include all customers while the examples filter on last name and payment ID. What do they mean by while the examples filter on last name and payment ID? Oh, because I think they've basically like um like these examples. So um because because see this one's pulling from this is just like a sample of the customer table, a sample of the payment table that they've filtered, um, you know, based on last name. So they probably just include Smith, Jones, and Oliver, and then payment ID, you know, one, four, two, ten, essentially. So they basically just got three samples of each table just to show you, this is basically just to show you the composition of each table. Um, right. So you can see how the join really like, it's just to kind of hint to say like, look, you join on customer ID to customer ID essentially. Yeah. I mean, I ended up with the same thing. It just, it seemed like the wording was just so confusing there. It's like they, they overcomplicated or I overcomplicated based on the wording of it. But at the end of the day, I did the same thing. Like, that's the only thing you do is you can just sum the total. Yep. You know, and would have been a little better if they would have said pay my ID. Would have used a uh, customer one. Well, I guess they did use it, you know, a couple of times there. But, but yeah, yeah, like you're summing it. It's, I don't know. The whole thing was just. See, and just, I actually like this wording because I know. I know a lot of people have said like, oh, I wish they just show me what they want, right? Um, and I think what they're trying to say is like, look, I'm showing you some samples, but this is not what you're supposed to, you know what I mean? If that makes sense. Um, because I know a lot of people have said like, oh, I wish they'd just show me what they want, essentially. Um, and I think what they're trying to get at is like, look, like these are the compositions of the two tables don't filter this because they obviously can't show, you know, the entirety of the tables. Right. And so I think they're just trying to say like, look, don't, don't limit it to the, just this, like, don't think that there's only three rows that uh, should be returned. I, I got it. Yeah. They're restricting the data set to two columns and three columns when those data, when the true tables might have 10 or 12 columns. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. They're just trying to show you like, look, these are the relevant columns you need because like they're really trying to like do you a favor and say like look these are really the only columns you need from these tables um you know and then but since we can't show all the records in these tables like we want to show you a sample of the data without showing you all the records and making it you know this page 100 scroll wheel lengths long so but they also don't want you to think that there should only be three rows when you run it you know right. the inverse is someone to be like oh you know like why I'm only getting three, like they only show three, you know what I mean? So that's kind of like what this little last bit. I, I think what I'm confused, what confused me or tripped me up is typically when you say filter and SQL, you mean the where clause. So I was thinking the where clause is last name, wait, but they didn't restrict on last name rather than saying we limited the columns to rather because they use the word filter, which automatically makes me think where clause, right? Yeah. And I think they did. Um, like, so for example, if I said select customer ID, and name and well, they really can cat here. Can cat first name, last name, name from customer, last name. And I'm guessing a lot of this is like from the book uh, where last name is in Smith. Jones and 
Like, see, we can uh, we can essentially like recreate what they did. So, like, that's the sample they pulled for one. And so, I think what they're getting at is, look, we filtered, we filtered on the last name, and then subsequently for the payment table, we filtered on the payment ID. Um, just to kind of show you an example, but it, you know, it says include all customers, even though the examples here filtered. I think is what it's getting at. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. Like I said, I got the same answer. It's just, it, just the wording took me a while just to figure it all out. And I'm like, whatever, this has to be the answer. So, yep. All right. And then I think for, yeah, for, I would just say, don't get too hung up on like what it's doing. Um, you know, it uses the regular expression to find certain films. I wouldn't get hung up on that. Just focus on, you know, like we did, all you've got to do is switch to the left to a right join, which is super easy. Everything else should fall into place. Um, and then essentially wants you to do the same thing as before, but this time it wants you to um, minus the result set of an inner join. So let's talk about this real quick. So on question five, it essentially wants you to do the same thing. So like a left join, um, but minus the result of, because we get uh, film or film IDs equals I. Yeah, so we're basically getting, um, you know, like if we were going to just kind of make this one subtract it, we start with film, we get the inventory after. So we can assume that, you know, film and inventory um, you know, there could be multiple, well, really there's, there could be films without inventory essentially. Um, so essentially what we want to do is subtract the inner joint. So we're starting with the left join, um, which is right here, but we want to subtract the inside. And so really we end up with this. Um, so this, this cheat sheet's really nice because it basically shows you, but basically you can just filter those out with a where clause. Um, so you you do the join part and then you just say, hey, you know, if I want to filter out the inside, all I have to do is say, hey, look, I want it where it's empty. So where the key of B is null. Or like in this case, because they want you to switch it to a right join where the key of A is null. Um, so anyways, this cheat sheet is really handy for that. Um, should make question five uh, pretty, really pretty simple. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I had. Like I said, super kind of light week. Does anyone have any questions? For the final project for the test cases, is it just kind of 10 queries that demonstrate what we learned in class? So like an update, a delete, an answer, and, um, you know, an, a read query? Or is there particular queries that we have to do for one of our 10 use cases? So there's, sh I think there should be more than 10 or I, I don't know if it even has like a number assigned to it. Let me take a look. Um, the thing said 12, but you told us 10. Got 10 it. tables, but then it said use cases too. So I think we have to write some queries to demonstrate. Yeah. Let me take a look and see. I, let me take a look at the rubric yeah, yeah. and tell you exactly what it says so I don't lie to you here so yep there's our things all right so yeah so it never really like specifies a number um so so I'll show you what I did and kind of like what what I guess like my interpretation of it is um, so let's see if I go to my documents. Sorry, I had to move a bunch of my computer stuff around because I moved a hard drive and so it's all everywhere here. Test cases. So I lumped all mine in together. So let me... Ah, here it is. Let me see if this is the one here. 
maybe. Did it open? Nope, it was empty. Okay, yep. Try the different one. All right, yeah, here it is. Okay. Crowd.sql. So this is what I did. So I really, the the way I kind of interpret it is that your test case should correlate with your UI map. So really what your, like the number of cases should really align with kind of what your UI does. Um, so so like here's an example of, of my test cases, so to speak. So like if this is a couple screens from my UI map, um, essentially I have, you know, um, like if I'm creating a, a, a recipe, um, you know, I have a drop down because when I create a recipe, I need to choose what cookbook it goes into. Right. But to but to get the list of cookbooks, I need to read those from a database. So to populate this cookbook drop down, I need to run our cookbook dot R dot two. So if I go to my cookbook section and r.2 here is my test case that powers that ui element so you can see here it gets the cookbook id and the description um, for the cookbook right and it does some joins to basically limit it to the cookbooks that i have access to based on the you know from my system user which is me down to you know i'm a family member of this family and that family has these cookbooks essentially. Um, so this is the list of cookbooks that I have access to. And then obviously when I save, you know, I fill out the form and when I save, it runs recipe C.1, which just happens to be right here. Um, and it inserts a potato stew, um, you know, the author, the name, prep minutes, in the description. So in this case, we make potato stew, it takes 30 minutes, you boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Um, so, so on this one here, you're just assuming that the person picked potato stew just to demonstrate that you could do it, but we don't have to do like some sort of uh, generic prompt to, to account for any possible thing that they could possibly put in there, right? Yep, correct, yep. No dynamicness to this at all. Um, okay. Literally, like it's called a test case because you're literally just like throwing in like sample data in the use case and aligning it. It's almost like a proof of, proof of concept to say, you know, because obviously we don't expect you to build the UI. So it's more like, hey, look, if the UI existed and we were pulling like one specific scenario in each case, this is what it would do. Um oh. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah, because I was trying to think of like, how would I write this dynamically that it fits every single time that they go yep. to delete, deletes the right thing, you know? Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, so I just like, um, like I said, at least one record per row is kind of like what I recommend for um, each table. So like, for example, like if I were really to kind of like finish this, you know, I would probably build a, um, a, a UI map that would have, like, you know, let me list, like, if I'm looking at a recipe, what, what ingredients are in there, you know, maybe it just might be, you know, like this potato stew, maybe it just has potatoes as an ingredient, you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, you can just kind of like do that and, and just build it to, to that one kind of test record that you're either pretending to insert or, or are reading, um, like in this, and, and like I said, uh, I, the reason I kind of lump my cruds with my test cases is because you'll see that a lot of them are like the same. Cause like when we do the crud, we have to read, we have to create, we have to update, we have to delete. And so a lot of those are just as simple as like, you know, like for example, step dot D one, you know, you just go to the step delete and it's done, you know, we like, you know, so the, so a lot of these may be a lot of the test cases may be your crud, um, but some of them won't. Like for example, reading in this cookbook, 
Um, or if we just like wanted to get like, hey, a list of all the recipes, for example, might be might be a little bit different than than your crud. But yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Great question. Um, any other any other questions? I, I and this hasn't had to be with the whole class, but uh, I don't have my next class for another twenty minutes, and I would love for you to look over my ERD. That doesn't need to be with everybody else, but I have twenty minutes of. Yep. Let's uh, let's do it. Do you mind if if other people see? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. I'll just leave it recording because a lot of times it's helpful. Um, so if if anyone else has any other questions, we can cover that first. But if not, um, you guys, everyone else can feel free to to dip out. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll take a look at this. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on, play out. And let me uh, let me make you co-host here. Okay. Let's see things up to show you all right you should be able to use share your screen now okay so um i work with browns on temple square i'm really regretting telling them that i was doing this class <laughs> <laughs> i think this would have been a lot more fun to do um if i was doing fun books that i've read um but i'm doing it <laughs> And this work thing that I, I really don't work in very much and uh, ever at all, <laughs> and so that's frustrating for me. And it's just, I mean, I, I'm really, really regretting it. So I, I haven't started connecting them because I have a feeling that we need to do some join tables. So let me explain. So and again, none of this, <laughs> these are my ideas. These are all things that, but it, okay. I think it's good because if ever you have like a client, like this is what it's like, right? It's not your info. It's not your data. It's theirs. And they're like, yeah, I want it to do this and this needs to do that and whatever. Um, yep. yeah. And so that's, that's it. Okay. So for the perennials on Temple Square, we have vendors. So let's just look at that one first. We have vendors. So the vendor is going to have a name. We have their phone number, an account number. We have an agent, the agent's first name and last name. Then their product, are they selling what they call plugs? That's like, a, like a, think of it as a little tiny potted plant. Um, yeah. And then you have seeds. So those are the different kind of products you could get. Then you have the vendor address, city, state, zip code. And then they sometimes have, will have notes. And then I had noticed that I didn't, I forgot the email. So I added the email. Okay. So did you just thinking about a vendor? Do you think I missed anything? I don't think so. The only thing I would do is, um, and in fact, uh, do you want to like, I don't know if you have teams or you want to email this to me real quick. If you want to save your, your, it should be an MWB. Um, do I do? I think if you just go to file and save yeah, model info. as. Save model as. And then here you can kind of call it uh, whatever. Um, let's see, final project. Okay. Yep. And if you want to save see. that, and then uh, yeah. um, if you want to shoot that over to me, maybe what would be helpful is I can kind of just take it, um, just because we might be able to move a little faster, and because I know we're we're down to fifteen minutes. Okay. Um, I can take it and just kind of like run through it real quick all right well let me just talk to you about then um the kind of what they wanted okay yep. so you have a vendor now the vendor sells the items over here we've got our plants this is our variety so we've got variety id its name oh i have variety name twice got a little excited i guess um then a variety sub because sometimes what they want isn't available and this is the sub and then you want to know what planting season it is. This is the variety type. Is it a seed or is it a plug? So I guess I don't need 45. Um, then it's sun requirement, part shade, all sun, et cetera. It's height and it's width, width and then a photo. And um, then, okay, so then we have an order. 
which is here. Yeah. yeah. So what, because once you've received or you have this order, so you're going to have an order number, order date, when it was received, things that are back ordered. This sum to order, I can't really remember. I'll, I'll send you the pivot table. I can't remember what sum to order was, but I just put it there as a, as a placeholder and then the shipment date. Okay, right. so right. now the arrangement. The arrangement is like a recipe for plants. So each recipe, each arrangement is going to have its name. And then it's going to say it's so much percentage of this variety and so much percentage of this variety. That way, if someone goes, wow, I really love that bed, another gardener can go, oh, I used arrangement X, Y, Z. And so um, so that's what the arrangement is. Um, so it's a percent. So I guess so variety is going to need to be connected to arrangement because then each variety is going to have a certain amount of percentage within each arrangement. Yeah, and I think that will to be many to many because there could be many arrangements made from varieties and many varieties can be arrangements. So, Yes. And, and if you want to, Amy, like you run out of time, I have a horticulture degree. So like this is kind of oh. interesting to me. So if you... Oh, cool. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Okay. Then inventory. So our person who runs the greenhouse... They have if they don't really care about plugs. All the plugs are used, but the it, the seeds it's um, they need to keep track of how many are unopened, how many are open, and also that needs to be linked with when they were ordered because that will help them know how old the seeds are. Then um, you have the gardens. So each garden has so many square feet. Um, the the garden like description that would be like the garden name basically the garden steward who's over the garden and it's sun hours because then say this garden might have this arrangement so garden is going to be connected to arrangement um then um so what this is doing is taking what the gardeners need as well as what the greenhouse person needs the greenhouse person needs these things in the middle they need to know um how many you know this many seeds went in this many street trays and um, this many plugs went in this many flats and how many flats they have of each thing. So that's how the variety also needs to be connected to the flats and the seed trays. But I can send you the pivot table um, that but the pivot table will not have the arrangement or the garden on it because the pivot table was from the greenhouse manager. Um, but what we're trying to do is combine the two databases between the gardeners and the greenhouse manager so that they're using the same one and can support each other instead of having two separate uh, databases. Got it. Can you see okay. what I've been like? I've like <laughs> the ground to a halt. I'm like, normally I'm so ahead of things and I'm like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. I should have never offered <laughs> Yeah, no. So because there's there's kind of a little bit going on here. So I'll kind of tell you how because I think I understand it. And like to me, there's like a couple different sections of this. So on one side, you got like the purchasing side of it, which is yes. the vendor in order. Mm -hmm. um, and then then we've kind of got like this uh, <clears throat> inventory management kind of section, which is, you know, yes. Where, where things are, what they are. And then there's kind of like this third piece, which is like essentially how they're used, which is garden and arrangement. Is that you? Correct? Yeah, I can tell you're pro. Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of rough this uh, a little <clears> bit. <throat> um, like obviously, like it won't have as much uh, stuff as yours, but we will. Um, just try to get the general idea. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, kind of the way, like, at least like when you start talking about it, I like to think in very general terms because that way I don't shoehorn myself, if that makes sense. Um, so like what I like to do is like, instead of calling it a variety, cause and, and maybe it's just that I don't understand that term. I'll be honest. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create what the gardeners called. call it. So I try to stick with their terms. Got it. Okay. So, so let's just, uh, so a variety can either be a 
plug or a seed. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so let's just stick with it because that was where I was. So variety. Um, and our table here. So I'm just going to rename this variety type. Variety. It's okay. I'm not going to judge you on spelling. And variety well. type. And then variety. Let's see. Variety type. Shoot. This is just supposed to be variety ID. Getting ahead of myself. Variety. Type ID. So basically what I would do is... And like I said, I like to keep things like super generalized. Um, so like, so for example, uh, an item type or um, yeah, let's just call it an item type. Um, an item type could be used uh, in multiple kind of use cases, but I'm going to say variety type ID. Um, you know, and let's just, let's just keep it clean. Variety, that's going to get me over and over. Variety type. <laughs> variety, like I told you, variety type ID. It's an integer primary key name. All right. So basically, I'm going to connect these two. So foreign key, let's connect it to variety type. So there's those ones. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's either going to come as a plug or it's going to come as a seed. Yep. So variety type would ultimately be two things, either plug or seed. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you know, maybe you could have more like, let's say they bought like a fully grown plant, for example, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to handle this side and then inventory first, just to make sure I kind of wrap my head around it. Um, so anyways, a flat. Um, let me make sure I understand this correctly. So a flat. They want to track like this is like individually, like in the warehouse, they could have a hundred flats and they kind of want to know like what's in each flat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. And how many flats they'll need. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. A flat, a flat has like 38 plugs on it, I think. Got it. And so, so question, can a flat be like mixed of like multiple different things or is it just like. It this could, flat? but when they grow them, it's a flat of something. They got it they stick to the same variety. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to go run on that assumption that it's all And it'll same. make a lot of sense to you when I send you the pivot table. Flat ID, int, primary key, auto increment, um, variety ID. And a variety, like, could there be a variety like for example, like let's say I have a, a specific, I'm just going to use Daisy, right? Cause it's the only flower I can think of off the top of my head. So mm -hmm. let's say I have a Daisy. Could I have a Daisy that's a plug and a Daisy that's a seed? And, and that would be two separate varieties or is that, or is, is Daisy mm -hmm. variety? No, I think they would, it would either be one or the other. Got it. Okay. So under that assumption, this works, but essentially we could have two different varieties. So like we would have Daisy plug, Daisy seed, two different varieties. Is that correct? Mm hmm Okay. Yes. All right. So variety ID, um, size. And I suppose we probably should put that. What if they buy a five gallon pot of it, which it happens two gallon. Okay, so there's a size of so flat and then um, and flats only hold plugs, correct? Um, yes. Well, eventually when the seed tray gets like the seed tray, they're in a seed tray and they get bigger then they could be put into a flat. So I guess I take it back. There's some times where it, it, it would after the seed has grown, it's almost like we've grown our own plugs. And think of it that way. Then we would put them in 
smaller pots than they'd be in a flat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That'd just be a container though, right? Like a flat's just a flat. It's just 38 plugs. If you put them into a container, then it's a one gallon container or a quart container, but a flat. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So flat is always a flat. It's just a unit of selling plants. Okay, so we're gonna connect those. So now we have variety type connected to a flat and then a seed. It's really flat, it's kind of its own thing. We have a flat size. Hopefully the flats are numbered. So like, let's say we are gonna add, um, you know, let's just let's just pretend the flat ID is the number um, for right now. All right, so there's the flat ID. All right, so the next step is we have really our seeds. Like, how do you store seeds? Is it? Uh, um... She just has it listed as um, opened, unopened, and total. So she usually, wants to know how many. Usually, a package, though, right? Or in a package. Oh yeah, like yeah. an envelope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's just call it an envelope. So we have P. I'm getting ahead of myself because I actually, I'm going to go back on my word. Well, no, we'll leave yeah. it. It's I'm about to have to go to my other class. How about I, I send you the Excel and I'll send you what I have. And then I'd, I'd love any pointers you want to share. Yeah. Yep. So absolutely. I'm just like ground to a halt. Except this morning I woke up at five. I'm like, that's it. I'm working on this. And <laughs> I've got class tonight. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about it. Wow. Yep. Okay. No all right. worries at all. You want me to send it to you as a message in Teams? Uh, either one will work fine. Yep. Either okay. one will work fine. All right. Thank you. Yep. No problem. All okay, right. Thanks, everybody. Evening. Yep. You too.